All right, y'all, man. Hey, look, man, it's Mighty Miles UFL on YouTube, man. Y'all subscribe to the station, Guns Down, Gloves Up movement, man. We're actually doing right now um, a community resolution uh, video for the Return of Citizen magazine. Um, you guys know I've been in several articles for the Return of Citizen magazine. I was on the cover of Return of Citizen magazine back in 2016. Um, shout out to all those dudes, uh, all in the federal and the state system nationwide. Return of Citizen magazine is basically for the reentry programs for people that are getting ready to come home from the system, man, for getting jobs and for getting into programs and basically getting people set up before they come home um, and get them established before they get out so they can succeed, man, with driver's licenses, with social security cards, with birth certificates, and with getting people um, job skills and stuff like that and state certified, not prison certified, state certified for people coming home so they can succeed and have a skill in the trade to come back to the streets and succeed with. You know, we don't do a lot of the war story things here, guys. You know, prison is what it is. You can watch Lock Up Raw. People get raped, get killed, and there's gangs in prison. I could tell you a million war stories. I'm sure Modesto on here could tell you a million war stories. He's in the California system. He could tell you a little bit about where he's been at. He could tell you about himself. I'll let him introduce himself again. It's my boy Modesto. Um, he's on my live feeds all the time. He's actually one of my moderators on uh, my channel right now. So he's, you know, he's, he's tight with UFL and stuff like that. He's getting ready to come down. He lives up in Reno now. He's getting ready to come down to Vegas and come and chill with me as soon as possible. You know, we've had a couple of little setbacks and stuff, but uh, he'll be here real soon. So you'll be seeing us on some lives together down here. But go ahead. Take it away, homie. Yeah, you know, they call me Modesto. I'm from Modesto, California. Yes, I've been to prison. I was in Old Corcoran. I was in Old Corcoran Shoe 4B1 Riot Cell 40 for like a couple years for a little assault or whatever they wanted to call it. You know, I don't like to talk about those things. I like to talk about what are we going to do when we get out? You know what I mean? Because it's hot out here. Everybody just says you're a felon. And that's that's the bottom line, you know. You try to get a job. You try to get a house, anything. It's background check, background check. You know, so I've never really done this before, so I'm kind of new, but, um, you know, I'm definitely down with the with the little movement, you know, that, that Mighty Mouse has, you know, getting people together, trying to trying to better us, you know, not not trying to lock us back up. Facts. And uh, and the thing, crazy thing is, I've heard of Corcoran, man, um, you know, a lot of a lot of the bigger prisons in the United States, I've actually, you know, from being in prison and being around. And uh, doing this reentry programs and stuff like that, I've actually heard of, of Corcoran and stuff. So, um, so that's that is that is that a pretty big prison in California? Is that a max? Is that like like in Virginia, we got levels one through four, and then we got super maxes, which are fives and sixes. So, on 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 that level, like what would Corcoran be considered? That's not a receiving center, right? That's an actual an actual prison. Is that dormitories? Is that cells? Or how is that? How is that? Um, uh, how was that set up and as far as the level systems go in um, California? Okay, so so California has one, level one, level two, level three, level four, and then it has what's called the shoe or ag set, right? Now, New Corcoran, this is what we all call it. I don't even know if it's the actual name. I just know us as prisoners, you know, that we're in there, inmates. That's what we call it, right? We call right. it New Corcoran and Old Corcoran, and they're literally across the street from each other. Uh -huh. Like, like across the street. Right. right? And right. so the new Corcoran is level one and level two. And then the oh. old Corcoran is level three, level four. And then it has the shoe there as well. Right. So that's kind of how that works. Um, All right. Explain, explain to people that don't um, know what the shoe is. It's, it's a special housing unit. That's what it stands for. Explain to uh, the people that don't understand what the shoe is. Explain to them what that is. So. Basically, what will happen is you get in trouble for something in prison, you know, whether it's stabbing somebody or slapping somebody. Either way, right? You can get what's considered a shoe term or an in an intermination program, right? Where you go to the shoe and you're like literally locked in a cell 24 hours a day, um, seven days a week, right? You only come out one hour. And then um, they also have like a shower every uh, twice a week and that's it that's that's all you come out for really 
Now, when you when you're in the shoe, um, I'm I'm gonna I'm like I'm gonna I'm gonna give it like an example, like where we're at when we're in the shoe, we're in the hole, we're in segregation and stuff like that. Um, we got to back away from our door. We got to get naked, drop, squat, cough. Then we got to back up to the door, get dressed, back up to the door, get handcuffed through the slot, then get escorted with a dog leash out to the dog cages to have individual wrecks where you're not able to actually have wreck. When you talk about that one hour out, it's not actually open. We're actually in a dog cage walking around in fucking circles and stuff for that hour. Or we get two showers a week or three showers a week, depending on where you're at. So you get three showers a week and it's the same situation. You back up to the slot, you get cuffed, you go into this little ass fucking shower, you back up to the shower slot, you get uncuffed, you shower, you get cuffed, and you get walked back to yourself with a fucking leash. Is that the same way that it's set up there? Same type of situation? The only difference that I know of at all that you said is when we go to the yard, it's a dog kennel and all that, but we have to walk through a metal detector. Right. Okay. Before we're allowed to go to the yard. Um, now it's kind of weird because they make you like walk like halfway into it. And they pull uh -huh. your handcuffs back so your handcuffs ain't in it, uh -huh. right? And you have to like walk halfway in it and it can't be. And then they take you to the yard, right? <clears throat> so your handcuffs don't set it off, right? That's and, that's, the only thing. And, you're, and you're still in individual dog cages, and you and they still yes. do that. So yes. so they still they still worry about somehow that you're still going to be able to pull off a move on another inmate in the dog cages. Yeah. Well, see, and here's what's funny is when you go into the dog cage, it's you and your, your, your cellmate, if you have one. Oh, so, that's so when you're in the hole, all right. So now that's the difference between our segregation and stuff like that. So when you're in the hole where you're at, you actually have a cellmate. You, you can. Yes. Okay. That would fucking suck. Whoa. If I'm fucking sitting back there and I only get two showers a fucking week and uh, they're fucking starving. Were you allowed to have yeah, commentary? Started breaking up there loud on the line. Huh? I can't hear you. You're breaking said, up the line. Can you hear me now? Kinda. Hold on. Let me try to put the Wi-Fi off. Hold on. Let me see if that helps. Hold on. Let me see if this helps. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you're like real scraggly, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes I'm it'll fucking it'll do that for a minute, man. This with StreamYards, it will do that and shit, but it'll come out clear. Um, me and you hear it, but when it's on um the YouTube and shit, it'll come out clear. So it's good it'll, now. It'll be good. So it'll be good. And no matter what, they don't hear that, but we'll we'll hear it to each other. I actually just heard okay. it with you just about ten minutes ago. So it does it okay. does do that. But um, yeah, that's crazy. Because man, dude, I would hate to be in a cell. Honestly, I you know you know it it depends, man, on the type of inmates you are. You know, to me, if I'm in the hole and I'm getting three showers a week and we're not being able to get commissary food wise and stuff like that, we can't have back there. You know, we're back there in in some you know. Worst of the worst situations, man. The last thing I want to do is look at another motherfucker, man. But again, some inmates like to be around other inmates, man, where it helps them pass their time, where y'all can, you know, play chess together or you guys can work out together in the cell, whatever the situation may be. So I understand, I understand in Maria, DC and Maryland. Can you hear me? I can now. Okay. Jeez, I lost you for a second. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it goes in now, man. Sometimes that shit'll lose. But uh it'll be fine on the regular thing. But yeah, that would suck, man. So fucking so how much time? Let me let me ask you this. How much time total did you did you did you do in California system? Is that the only system you've been in? Is California? You've been everywhere. Yeah, no, I've only really been in California. In prison in California. I've been like in jail a day or two, you know, other places, but yeah. Yeah. So how much time have you done total? Like, if you don't mind me asking, how much time you've done all together? Roughly 18. 18 years? Yeah, because I went to prison uh, four times in total, and my last term was 10 years flat. Hundred percent, you know the system. Hundred percent. Well, I've also been out for like five years, so I've been out six. I got out in two thousand fifteen, yeah. so I've been so out. I've been out six you know, years. Things could have changed. Yeah. Well, 
I'm this is the first time I've been on probation. I, I'm 44 years old. I got on probation when I was 41. That's the first time I had ever been on probation since I was uh, 13 years old. So, and I've been in and out the juvenile correctional centers, and I've uh, been on you know group homes and stuff like that. So I've been on probation since I was 13, and um, I've done two prison stays. I did two eight-year bids, and um, and I and this is the first time I've ever been off of papers ever, man. You know what I mean? Are you still are you still on papers? You're off. You're good. No, nah, I'm off. I'm off everything. You're off everything. Good shit, man. So, and then you moved out here. Like you, you live out in Nevada. I live in Nevada. We're both out here right now and stuff like that, man. What's the difference between live here? Were you on probation out here, or did you keep your probation in California till you moved out here? No, nah, I, I when I when I left here, I was basically you know pretty much off everything. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's what's up. All right, yeah, man. So fucking up. So let me ask you this, man. So. In, in the California, in the California systems, man, you know, in Virginia, you know, they give us an opportunity to get state certified in a lot of stuff, man, from age back, depending on your prisons. Every prison's got its specialty shit, like certain prisons got barbering, certain prisons got age back, certain prisons got electrician, certain prisons got floor covering, roofing, industrial maintenance, you know, stuff like that. So in California system, man. Let me ask you this. What does the system offer you? And I'm and when I say state certified, I'm not talking about prison certified. I'm talking about you have a state certification that doesn't has nothing to do with prison. This is a fucking same certification that somebody on the streets would get. So when you get your barbering license, you have a barbering license. This is not a barbering license for prison. This is a barbering license for the street. When you get your HVAC license, this is an HVAC license for the street. Same with electricians and so on and so forth. This is not no prison license. This isn't some bullshit that you're doing just to pass time in prison. This is actually certifications that you can use as a trade when you get out of the system to use and get a job. And we'll get to that back in a minute. But I want to ask him, what does California systems offer you guys? The only thing that I know of that they offered the whole time I was there is a a drug and alcohol counselor, right? And that's kind of that was kind of new. That was towards the end of my my stay. I heard of that, and then they did a, a a plumbing and electronics. But you have to be able to get to like a level two or whatever to do it. To get it, that's yeah. sad, man. Because a lot of people are leaving from threes and fours. A lot of people ain't never going to be able to get that level two status, especially in my state. Um, and even level threes and fours still offer some type of shit. Uh, even fucking making boots, man. Uh, they they call it uh, tailor shops. You know what I'm saying? So you can get your tailor uh, certificate, man, where you can actually fucking sew and, and do upholstery and shit like that. So even at your high levels, they got upholstery classes and auto bodies, auto mechanics. Um, they got, um, what is that shit uh, where they do the green uh, agriculture? They got agriculture certifications, man. You know, it, it really, that's sad to hear, man. You know, as big as California system is, and as as big as as big as the systems are in California, that's really sad here that that fucking um, that they don't offer a little bit more than that for people coming home, man. Especially with the recidivism rates being so fucking high. I mean, when I say recidivism rates, that means the percentages in your state of in people that go back to prison um, that have done five years or more, which is insanely high. Virginia used to be up in the nineties when they started having the reentry programs and stuff like that. It dropped down to the 80s. When they started bringing in programs into the system, it dropped down into the 60s, which is almost half the inmates that get out of the Virginia systems can make it on the streets now. Before that, all they offered you was a GED and basically $25 and a bus ticket. Um, when they started programs and stuff like that, man, where they actually started helping dudes go to the street with skills that they could fucking use on the streets. Uh, and I'm talking about drug dealing skills. I'm not talking about breaking and entering skills. I'm not talking about robbery skills. I'm talking about skills that they can fucking use on the streets. Our fucking recidivism rates went down to almost half. For every state to not follow that suit is ridiculous. 2022. It's fucking ridiculous, which basically means that they're fucking using the federal money to have inmates and they are stealing money. But a lot of these states are doing, and it's not, it's, this is not a, um, this is not a secret. This is shit that we've been knowing for years, being part of the Returning Citizen magazine. We've been knowing this for years.
that's a fact, guys. And um, and like I said, and you can see it with the food that they feed you, with the medical care, the health care that they have for you inside the system, and you can see it with the programs that they give you, that they're stealing money. They're making about a rough, a rough estimate about forty to fifty thousand dollars off of an inmate every year. I don't know what state you guys live in, but you show me where you're getting forty or fifty thousand dollars worth out of them. Real talk. I had shoulder surgery in prison. It took me almost two years to get it. They kept telling me I had, I had fucking arthritis in my shoulder. You know, they wouldn't even give me an MRI. You know, that shows you the health care that they have inside the system, man. For, so for them not to offer shit, man, in California, that's really fucking sad, man. That's really fucking sad. So it basically leaves you guys and the California system to um, resort back to your old fucking ways or have enough sense about you to be able to get out on the streets and Modesto said he started his own business. I got my own tractor trailer company now. I actually just got that. But I had my CDL for years. I've had my CDL for a very long time. But um, I just now started my own company, man. So if you, unless you guys are out here really trying to get your shit together, man, you're basically going to your back is going to be against the wall and you're going to go right back to your old living and your old way because you have nothing else to work to. You know, I think we talked about the other day, Modesto, we were talking about using their families as a crutch to well i'm not going back because i got my kids and wife you know i'm not going back because you know my mom's old and she's dying i'm not going back whatever it is the reason is that you're not going back cool you know what i'm saying but a lot of people use those same people in their lives that you said that you're not going back for to go back well i gotta go back to stealing and robbing and hustling for my kids i gotta go back to stealing and robbing for my wife. I got to go back to stealing and robbing because my mom is sick and she's in the hospital and I can't fucking pay her medical bills. So a lot of them same people use that same shit in a reverse mood. Man. There's a black dude that came up to the, yeah, there's okay. dude that came up to the door. <laughs> fucking asked me yeah. if I was single and was looking for cigarettes. I slammed the door in his face. But you need to keep an eye out, dude. What the hell? Yeah. Where the, where the fuck y'all living at? Oh, bro. <laughs> <laughs> The wife just came like, hey, somebody's at my door asking me if I'm single. <laughs> Man, where the fuck y'all living at? <laughs> I don't know, bro. Don't get me wrong. I don't care I like if you that. colored or not, but you leave my family alone. No, I don't care. But you said you started like your own business, man. Like, so what did you do? Like, because they didn't give you nothing, no options when you got out. So how easy was it for you to resort back to going back into being back in the streets, man? Like, how many times did you think in the back of your mind, like, man, I'm, I'm about ready to fucking, I'm about to do this, I'm about to do this, I'm about to do that, because these motherfuckers got my back against the wall, like, I mean, because they didn't offer you shit while you were in there, like, what did it take for you to stay free and be able to get your shit now, where you got your own business and doing what you're doing now? It took, <laughs> hold on, let me get back in the whip. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Tell that dude to go buy a cigarette somewhere else. Hey, man, that's a me alone. Asking for a fucking single, a cigarette. I said, I'm single. That's so. What the hell? But they don't go to your fucking house and do that shit. They went to his house. Oh, man. And what the fuck? Bro, that's crazy. Yeah, so like, what did you be able to get your like stable enough inside your mind? You said your wife and your kids. That's definitely a plus. But what did it really get you to be like, look, man, by all means necessary, I'm gonna do this shit the right way, man. Well, first of all, don't get me wrong. In prison and stuff like that, I never used drugs, right? But I was a real bad dolphin on the streets, so I had to give up that first. <laughs> Like, no like you're getting high every day and thinking you're gonna get your sh stuff together, you know, it's not gonna happen. For sure. You know what I mean? And you know, yeah, I love them. You know, I used to love them drugs, right? So I had to leave the man. But that's dope. You broke up super bad, bro. Yeah. Now you good? Lisa just said hi. She Oh, what's up? What's up, sis? There she goes. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Man, 
Can you hear me? I can hear you now yeah, a little so, bit. Can you hear all me? Right, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I can hear you. I'm good. So <laughs> it goes in and out over here, man. So tell yeah. me. So so go ahead. Understand what you're saying. So you had to get off dope. What else, man? So so basically. You know, I don't want to put too much out there, but me and my wife were getting high together, right? I yeah. woke up one day and I was like, we're done. This, this is a wrap. Right? Yeah. And we've been clean ever since. Right? Yeah. So, you know, I try to get jobs, try to do this, try to do that. You know, she gets hired everywhere. She's never been in trouble. Man, it's horrible. Yeah. I couldn't get a job anywhere. Yeah. So finally, you know. I know this ain't for everybody because everybody doesn't have the, the extra help that I had, right? Yeah. But my wife got some st some stocks in Tesla, right? Yeah. So I cashed some out, and I bought myself a trailer, and I started buying um, storages and just selling everything out of it. You know, and that's yeah. what I do. But, so basically like, like, like what you see on storage wars. Yes, but a lot cheaper, okay? Like – the most expensive locker I bought was like a couple hundred bucks. And, and is there stuff? So how do you get rid of that stuff? Is that is it stuff that you got to pawn, or is it stuff that you find people online to buy, or what is that? And I always wanted to know that because I used to watch that show in prison all the time, Storage Wars. I used to watch it faithfully. So what I, I do? I used to love it. I used to fucking. I even had an idea that I thought that I could have fucking did that too. I've always wanted to do it myself. Don't get me wrong. Right. But what I did is I use my wife's um, Facebook and I yeah. sell on Facebook. I just take pictures of everything, post it on Facebook. I go to flea markets. You know, I do all that. And I have the kid with me when I do it all because, yeah. you know, she's at work most of the time. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know, I got blessed, you know, God, God yeah. blessed me with a good wife that they can actually do something with herself. Right. You know, I feel real bad for the people that don't have that because I know what a struggle it is for me, and I was lucky enough to get it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. No, good job, bro. Real shit. I might buy a Tesla from your wife. The way the <laughs> gas prices are going, <laughs> I ain't bullshit, man. Man, but look. So that's great. So let me let me tell let me let me tell you guys this, man. So at the end of the day, also y'all, like he said, he was a felon. He was struggling to get a job coming out of prison. And the reason why he was struggling getting a job coming out of prison because he wasn't offered shit in prison because they only offered something if he got down to a level two. So basically he wasn't offered nothing. So he came home to nothing. You know, his wife had a job and he was lucky to have have that support system to be able to, you know, flourish and be able to start his own thing and have that crutch and, that, and, and stuff like that. But as you know, 90 percent of motherfuckers coming out of prison don't have that especially the ones that have done a lot of time whose families and everybody else have died and, you know, and kids have grown and they don't have anybody. I know a lot of people that got in prison have nothing, nobody. So for the states that don't offer you guys shit, there's a thing called the workforce, y'all. And I'm going to give you my Gmail right now. It's uflmightymouse at gmail.com. Hit me up. And if you, and I can definitely help you guys get your CDL. I've helping a lot of inmates get their CDL since they've been home. If you can get a driver's license, I can help you get a CDL. Most CDL drivers right now are making between sixty and seventy thousand dollars a year driving tractor trailers for a company. All right, with health insurance and everything else. So I can help you get your CDL, and I got other guys that can help you get their electrician shit, their HVACs and stuff like that. I even got a guy that works in the tattoo shops and stuff like that. So. Whatever your skill sets are, I can help you guys. Whatever you're trying to do, I can help you get into some of these schools. And a lot of these schools are offered to you for free. And a lot of inmates coming home don't know what they're offered for free. And this is nationwide. This isn't just federal and state. This is this is both. And this is in every state. So, well, man, you know, I live in Alabama, Mouse, and my shit might be a little bit different. It's not. There's a workforce and there is a goodwill in every state on every corner throughout the nation. And I promise you that I can give you the ins and outs and the resources to help you get whatever it is that you're trying to get and not just get it, but get it for free and get certified in this thing. But you have to have a GED or, and you have to be able to pass a tape test. So I'm not going to be, I'm not going to 
you know, sugarcoat shit. If you're coming out of prison after doing 20, 20 years or 15 years and you don't even have a fucking GED, you wasted a lot of your time away and you're going to have to get that before I can help you. You know what I'm saying? Because they're not going to fuck with you. They're not going to do anything with you unless you can pass a tape test. They want to make sure that you're at least a capable body that can read and write. You know what I'm saying? You have to pass it and you have to show that you have a GED. So those are two things. And you have to, and with me and what I can help you do personally, you have to be able to get a license. So if you got some vehicular manslaughters and DUIs that are fucking only a year old and stuff like that, I can't help you. Not with what I do, but I can help you get other jobs and other certifications in, in different areas. And I got people that can do that same thing. You know what I mean? But again, you have to be able to uh, help yourself, man. You know what I mean? I can only lead you to water. I can't make you drink. You know what I mean? You got to want it for yourself. You know what I mean? I can't force you to do anything, you know, and there's no easy road to this shit. You know, there's a lot of free roads for you felons out here. There's a lot of free roads that a lot of, they don't want to tell you because they don't want to spend the money on you. You know, so a lot of people don't really understand and know what they're offered when they get out because they don't want you to know what you're offered when you get out because they don't want to spend the money to show you what you're offered when you get out. You know, a lot of people, man, they'll pay everything down to your tools. If you're a barber, they got programs that will give you and pay for all of your shit. If you're an electrician, they got programs that will pay for all of your shit that you need. If you're a fucking floor covering guy or whatever it is, the tools. Always, I know people that have gotten vehicles, vehicles from the state, man. Vehicles. All right. This isn't just for fucking welfare dudes that are on the fucking streets that are junkies that got fucking 10 kids living in Section 8, all right, that don't want to fucking work. They do this shit for inmates, too. You know what I'm saying? The people that are really trying to fucking make it and get fucking jobs and certified and, and really fucking support their families. Not just the fucking people that are just trying to live off the state for free uh, and just be lazy and live, you know, fuck, keep having 20 fucking kids and, and just live off the fucking, you know, live off the land. You know, this is for people that are really trying to get hand ups, not handouts, man. And I've said that shit a thousand times on my live feeds before, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're just looking for a fucking handout from the state, it's only going to last you for so long. You know what I'm saying? If you're looking for a hand up, man, they're going to be more than willing to help you fucking get what you need because they don't want to support you. They don't want to fucking support you. You know, they want to get you a skill where you can support your fucking self and be a productive member of society. They don't want to fucking keep fucking paying you fucking food stamps and section eights and welfare and everything else that you're fucking getting out here, man. They want you to fucking, they want you to be able to take care of your own kids. You know, I, I want you to be able to take care of your own kids because it makes my fucking taxes go down. I want you to be able to take care of your kids as well. You know, let me just keep it real. And I want you to take care of your kids too, man. You know, I don't want you to have six more that I have to take care of. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be able to take care of the fucking two that you got that you're not taking care of already. You know? Just keep it real, man. On a real note, too, man. <clears throat> this is real cap, right? That's how I met Mighty Mouse. I was seeking some sort of help. And that's how I met him. He's a good dude, man. And he will try to help you. For sure. I appreciate that, homie. Real shit. Real talk, man. I'm glad I had you on here, man. I told you it wasn't going to be that hard. Modesto was kind of hard getting him on here. He was supposed to come down here a couple weeks ago. I ended up being in Texas, and then he had some vehicle problems and stuff, so we've missed each other a couple times. But I guarantee you, I promise you guys, he'll be down here, or I'll come up there before fucking summertime. Me and him are going to fucking link up one way or the fucking other. You know what I'm saying? Him and his wife and shit, they're going to come down here, or fucking me and my wife are coming up there one way or the other. Look at this fat pig. Look at this pig over here. <laughs> fucking. What's up, little man? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> he over there eating uh, he over there eating his uh chicken nuggets and shit. So I didn't exactly have car problems. What happened is I bought a car <laughs> and it had problems. <laughs> 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 I bought that Yukon, right? Yeah. I bought that Yukon and uh we're driving it home and my wife's like, Hey, you ain't got no tail lights, you ain't got no brake lights. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just told my wife that the other day. She was behind me and she didn't have a she didn't have a headlight on. And I was like, "Yo, one of your headlights is out." I said, "You just go to fucking AutoZone and go get a fucking light, man." She didn't even know her shit wasn't on. Nah, man, we bought this thing at like oh, I don't I don't even remember yeah. what time it was. My wife don't get home till like six thirty at night, right? Yeah. So we went and got it after she got home. 
I don't know why we didn't check the lights, but uh, hey, whatever. We're driving home. It's night. She's like, you ain't got no lights at all. I was like, okay. Uh -huh. So I had to put it in the shop. Like Man. the next morning. Jeez. Because we well, were going to come up there, but I had to put that in the shop. Well, you know, everything happens for a reason, man. You know, never know what could have happened on the trip down here. So yeah. when, it, when it's meant to be, when it's meant to be, it'll be, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey, like I said, we're only a couple hours from you. You know, you're you're up in uh, uh, northern uh, Vegas, and I'm down here in, in I mean, northern uh, Nevada. I'm down here in Vegas. So we'll link up. We'll, we'll definitely, we'll definitely make it happen, man. Lisa wants to come up that way anyway one day, man. She ain't never been up there. So, what? so See, I've been to, I've been to uh, Vegas. I used to, you know, I was younger. Don't get me wrong, but I lived yeah. in Vegas for a minute. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you told me that shit. Yeah, I, I'm not impressed. You know, I'm not impressed. I mean, it's like I said, it was, it, it's fun for people that are coming here on vacations and stuff like that. Like, um, yeah. I'm not. Impressed. I mean, it's got everything I need. Like, I mean, it's the city. So, I mean, but it's so so was I was in the city in fucking D.C. and Virginia and Maryland. So I was like, I fucking I've always been in the city. So I've never lived in the fucking country. The only bad, like when I got out of prison, we were living in Charlottesville. Now, that was bad. Like, fucking we were literally in the middle of nowhere and I was not happy there. So, I mean, but here I do have everything I need. Like I got I can go to fucking Walmart. It's a mile down the road. I go wherever I want. I don't have to drive anywhere to get anywhere. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, am in the, I am in the city. Um, I'm used to the beach. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm, you know, I'm used to being on the beach and stuff like that. So that right there is kind of like that. You know, I've grown up in the beach, so it's kind of like that right there. It's kind of like tough. And the fucking heat out here is fucking extreme as fuck. I'm not used to heat like this. So, and we got here in the summertime. and it, But the rest of the year is nice out here, man. So I kind of can deal with the fucking two, two, the two months of 120 degree weather uh, to fucking, to have 70 degree weather the rest of the fucking year you know what i'm saying so it's kind of like yeah. i i kind of i i kind of i'm not kind of mad you know i don't have to deal with the snow i don't have to deal with the fucking ice i don't have to deal with fucking you know 20 degree weather and shit like that so to me it's it is um, it is kind of all right i, I kind of can i kind of think i could deal with it but man when i got out here everybody was like oh yeah but it's dry heat mouse you know what i'm saying you're used to humidity i said man i don't give a fuck i said dog this shit is fucking hot I was like, dude, I was like, fucking, this shit is in fucking, dude, I'm fucking cooking. I'm not even sweating, and I'm cooking. You know what I'm saying? I said, this is fucking ridiculous, dude. I've never felt nothing like this in my life. I said, this is not, this is not, this is not realistic, man. I said, motherfucking human beings are not supposed to exist where it doesn't even fucking rain for a year at a time. <laughs> We're not supposed to live here, dude. It's, if our water has to come from fucking five states away to get here, it's fucking, it's, it's pretty simple to say that we're not supposed to fucking be able to survive in this. You know what I'm saying? Hey, <laughs> driving there from Cali, too, you got to drive, like, through the desert, like. Bro, all the way up 15. It's all desert, yeah. and there's nothing there. You got fucking, you got Baker, and then nothing. <laughs> and Baker is like a fucking Twilight Zone, bro. It's like some 1950s bombshell type shit that you see in some fucking movies, like some after effects of some fucking nuclear fallout fucking town. <laughs> That's how I know that there's an airport out there, right? When you were talking about one airport, and I knew of another insane. one. Because when we were driving out there, I was like, that plane's awful low to be in the desert, right? right? And, she, and the old girl was like, yeah, there's an airport right there. It wasn't an airport. That was, a UFO, that was a UFO, bro. That wasn't an airport. That was a UFO. <laughs> that was a UFO, <laughs> bro. <laughs> that was a fucking UFO, dog. But I've been out in the truck, man, and I've been like, man, I swear I hope this bitch don't break down because there's nothing out here. You know what I'm saying? I was like, bro, nothing. I'm surprised. Honestly, I, I, I'm going to keep it real. I'm surprised that I had phone service in between there because I'm telling you, if somebody breaks down and they don't have phone service out there, and that, dude, that's like the fucking, uh, what's that desert, Mojave? or What's the fucking, uh, what's that fucking hottest desert right through there? And that Mojave, Lisa? Whatever the hell it's called, uh, Mojave or some shit, whatever. It's the hottest. Ba pretty much Baker is the hottest in Baker, California, which is like only 30 miles from Vegas. It's supposed to be the hottest place in. What is it? Devil some shit. I don't know. It's supposed to be the hottest devil. What, what devil some shit or none? Whatever. It's supposed to be the hottest fucking place in America, man. It's supposed to be the yeah. hottest period and shit in America right there. So and ain't nobody yeah. pulling over to help you in that heat. Nah, you're dead, bro. If you fucking don't have phone service, you're dead as fuck. But you're literally, I, I live literally 40 miles from the hottest place in fucking America. 
<laughs> I live 40 miles from the hottest place in America. I live 30 miles. Yeah. From, I, live, I live 30 miles from California. You know what I mean? It's fucking in, in, in that in that in that part of California is the hottest fucking part of um the hottest place in fucking America. It's insane. It's it's crazy. Man. But yeah, that it was definitely good to talk to you on here, man. And fucking no, uh, good to talk to you, you know, real shit, man. And like you said, you got your stuff together, man. You're doing what you can. You fucking um you're free, you're off papers, you're out of the state that you were in prison at. So you got a family, you got a kid, so you're winning. You know, no matter how you look at it, you know, I know there's gonna be always gonna be times where it always feels like fucking damn man, like I'm failing or I don't have enough or I'm not getting by or whatever the situation may be, man. But trust me, bro, and you know, and you've done 18 years, you've done more time than I have. So you know, like I know that it's always fucking worse on the other side. You know what I'm saying? So no matter what you still so matter, no matter the hardships that we go through out here or what we see out here, I bitch and complain all the fucking time. If fucking, if my money's not right, if fucking shit ain't right in the bank, please will tell you, I bitch all the fucking time. Where the fuck is this? That's $200. Where that $200 at? Who stole my money? You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I, I literally, I mean, I literally fucking snap the fuck out on anything and everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but at the end of the day, bro, we come from fucking the bottom. We've been in the bottom. We've lived in the trenches where we literally have fucking starved and been hungry and have not been able to wash our ass for days at a time unless it was in a fucking sink. You know what I'm saying? Where we've had security toothbrushes where we can't even brush our teeth with real toothbrushes. You know what I'm saying? Where we've had to smell other motherfuckers' asses is where they've turned our water off for fucking a week at a time because they didn't want you to flush cell phones and shit down the fucking toilet, man, where there's been fucking shit in your fucking toilet back the fuck up. You know what I'm saying, bro? We've lived in way worse situations eating ramen fucking noodles <laughs> and fucking having nothing Compared to where we're at right now, man. So it always gets worse. It always, it, it, we have already seen worse. So no matter what, how ba ever bad it ever gets out here, it ain't never going to be as bad as what we, the fuck we've already been through. No. You know what I'm saying? It'll never be as bad as what we've already fucking been through, man. And, you know, it, it, I'm not going to, I'm going to keep it real. Like my stress is out here. And it, it is a sad to say my stress is out here. And, you know, are, are, are more out here. Because I got people to take care of. In prison, I had to take care of myself. You know what I'm saying? I had to take care of me. You know what I'm saying? I know I can take care of me in any environment or any situation. It's either that or I die. So I know I know how to take care of me. But when it comes to having family and kids and everybody else and always trying to, if you care about your kids, if you care about your family, the stresses are fucking 10 times more for me out here on the fucking streets than I ever had in prison. And I'm talking about literally I've been on the bottom of the barrel on the fucking shit end of things in prison, man, where you literally where most of the motherfuckers I know out here on the streets probably would have committed suicide. Seeing the things that I've seen and being through the things that I've been through would probably kill themselves. They would never be able to survive the shit that I've been through. You know what I'm saying? They would probably kill themselves immediately. But, you know, the stress is out here, man. When you've got family and kids, trust me, man, I understand it's fucking it's even more than being in there. Because I know at the end of the day, I, I feel like I'm expendable. Like, I know I'm good. I can fucking survive anything, bro. You can treat me, kick me, fucking tear me down, neglect me, health care, starve me, throw me in a fucking 120 degree fucking cell with no fan. You know what I'm saying? No TV, fucking no humans, you know, not being able to see a human for 100 days at a time, 90 days at a time. So I go up to ICAs and shit, but I've been through all that. So I've been through the worst of the worst. I've been through fucking hell. You know what I'm saying? I've been through whatever you could probably pr produce in your mind is fucking hell on earth. I've been through it. So, but I'm going to tell you, man, it's harder out here having kids and family. If you care for them and you want things for them, it's harder out here. It's harder for you to be able to succeed out here. And, and, and the stress is out here, bro. If you don't have some type of something to fucking fall back on and be able to produce for them, it's fucking impossible. So you better fucking get your shit together. You better be able to get a skill or a trade or something, businesses, whatever the fuck it may be, bro. McDonald's ain't cutting it. McDonald's ain't going to work. You better be able to have something, some type of fucking hustle out here. And you out here selling drugs, you out here hustling, you out here doing wrong. Man, understand, you know, take a penitentiary chances or penitentiary chances, bro. And that's exactly what the fuck they are. And um, you, they got to sell for you. They got a room for you. 
They have a place Lights for you. Lights are always on. Lights are always on, bro. They're always on. So if you're taking those penitentiary chances, if you're taking those chances to go back, understand, man. Don't cry about it when they come and get you. Don't cry about it. Don't cry about it. You know, don't want food. Don't don't be looking. Don't be looking. Uh, don't be looking for God to save your ass at that point in time when you've already neglected God for. And I'm not even getting religion, but you neglected God for all those times. Don't be fucking looking. Don't be looking for help then. He probably the one that pulled you aside to get your fucking mind right. You know what I'm saying? To get your fucking head out your ass. So, you know, and I'm not going to say, you know, me being home from prison. I'm not going to say I haven't. Oh, I, you know. I'm not going to say I haven't taken my my chances. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say I haven't taken my chances. I went back for another eight years, you know? So definitely taking my chances. I've been there. I understand your situation. I understand your pain. But it's uh, better to live in a tent in the motherfucking woods and, uh, than to be back in the motherfucking cell, man, as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? My mind thoughts. I can I could buy a nice tent from Gander Mountain. I could buy me a nice. I could I could buy me a nice eight hundred dollar fucking tent in Gander Mountain and go live in Seattle in the woods, man, with a motherfucking nice sleeping bag and pillow. I could have ramen noodles stacked to the ceiling, baby. You know what I'm saying? I could have honey buns all up and down my motherfucking tent. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm telling you. Hey, but one thing for sure, I could walk out that tent. I could take a shit in the woods. I can go down the street and, and, and go see people. You know what I'm saying? Hey, but, you know, I can go to the stores. You know what I'm saying? Don't, what I weigh, me living in that tent in the woods is shit that you can't do. Being in that motherfucker's cell. I'm Wait, just keeping lie. it real. I'm just keeping it real, man. Remember that shit. I ain't lying. <clears throat> yeah. But shit, man, you got anything else you want to say, man? You need to bring your ass down here. Come see me, man. Man, I've been trying and trying. I'm, I'm um, up. I just got a piss on the 19th, man, after that, bro. I'm chilling. I was going to do a D.C., Maryland, Virginia event, man. But, it, you know, the sad thing is I can't even get my fucking own cities in fucking line, bro. Like, I'm getting ready to say, oh, fuck them people, man. You know, I, I got my homeboys out there, Wolf, you know, Lambo, you know, War Jones. I got my people out there. But at the end of the day, man, if they can't get their shit together, there ain't going to be a D.C., Maryland, or Virginia event. Because the last Virginia, D.C., Maryland events I had, a motherfucker got killed. So we're not going to do that again. That's for sure. You know, yeah, my cousin called me right. Yeah, <laughs> yesterday he called me. I'm like, "What you doing? I'm on my way to Vegas. Why didn't you pick me up? You had to come through here, <laughs> man." Asshole. What's in between? What's in between Vegas and 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 um and Reno? Well, technically, I don't live in Vegas. I'm 30 minutes outside of Vegas, yeah. right? So he had to come through here to get there. Uh, no, he lives in Reno. You live in Reno, right? No. How far you live from Vegas? How long? How long do you? How long does it take you to get here? That I'm not sure, but I'm 30 minutes away from Vegas. Look, where where you're at right now? Yeah, bro, you're not that far at all, bro. I mean, no, no, my bad, my bad. I'm 30 minutes away from Reno. Yeah, I'm about to say, I, that's what I was going on. Like, Hold up, man. I'm going to come pick you up, dog. Don't even trip. I'm coming to scoop you. You don't even, nah. even, worry, about a, you don't even worry about a car. I'm coming to get you. <laughs> nah, man, hey, I'm in a town. To Reno. All right, I'm that, a, hey, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm in a town called Fernley, Nevada. It's 30 minutes outside of Reno, roughly. Reno. So, so what is is Reno a city? Is it like is it the, it's not the size of Vegas? I know that Vegas is the is the biggest out here. But is it is it a big city? Is it decent size? Yeah, yeah. And like like Sparks, Nevada, and yeah. Reno connect. So it really seems like it's one big area. And if you count them both together, they're the size of Vegas, if not a little bit bigger, to be honest. But they butt up to each other, right? Yeah. So like. From where I'm at, I would go to um, I'd go to Sparks and then into Vegas. From where I'm at, so what is that like? Like hour wise, what do you think? I'm 30 minutes from Vegas. I mean, 30 uh, minutes from Reno. Reno. <laughs> so how far is Reno? So how far is Reno from Vegas? No, I think, I think I'm about four hours from you. Yeah, like that's four what hours. I was, four hours. Lisa said eight hours. I was like, hell no, not fucking eight hours. That's insane. It's not that uh -huh. far, huh? No, it's not that far. Look it up. Google it, Lisa. See, and I don't have... Okay, Google no. 
Fernley, Nevada. It's not it's not eight hours, bro, because I'm gonna tell you, I was I was going up to Oakland to visit motherfucking my boy Pimpy, man. And it's that's way further than fucking Reno. And I already know that it, you're not that fucking far. So I know you're not fucking eight hours away. You're like probably four to six hours away. You're not that far. Six hours. There you go. Six hours. Yeah. yeah. You're not that far. So I'm about six and a half hours. Yeah. That's not yeah. bad. No, that's, that's what you said. Six and a half hours. That's not yeah. bad. That's not bad. You can get down here. Man, and, and that's going to speed limit. So if you fucking know how to drive, you can get down here by like five. Not not but, this guy. But what's in between there though? Like what the fuck is in there? Like in between there. Because all I've ever seen anything outside of Vegas is nothing but fucking desert. Now Vegas is is at man, Vegas is pretty big, dude. We got like fucking over three million people in uh, three three point five million in population. That's fucking like three times the size of Dallas. So Vegas population fucking huge. As far as getting from one side of Vegas to the other, it's not that far. So it shows you literally a half hour. I can get to Henderson in a half hour and be out of Vegas. That for four million, almost four million people to be that condensed into one area, that is fucking houses on top of fucking houses on top of houses, which Vegas is. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 fucking condensed as fuck out here. But once you leave Vegas, there is nothing. We got nothing out here. It's fucking death. I think like I'm fucking going to the beach somewhere. Like I'm like, oh yeah, as soon as I get to this out here, man, we're hitting the fucking we're we're going to the fucking beach, man. It's a fucking illusion, dog. It's the desert. There's fucking nothing out here. It's mountains and fucking desert. You know what I'm saying? So like I'm trying to I'm gonna look on the map. I wanna see like what is exactly in between like me and you. Because my guess would be desert. <laughs> see, I've never been to Vegas from here, so I don't know either. Right, I, I've, I, I I've only been to Vegas I, from Cali. It's desert. It's desert. It's fucking desert and mountains. I promise you. I <laughs> promise you. It's fucking desert and mountains and nothing else. It's fucking straight. It's misery. It's misery from point A to point B. It's fucking vultures eating fucking rotten carcasses from point A to point B. You eat it, It's a miserable fucking place, bro. This is like non. Listen, dude. I've never seen fucking. I've never seen nothing like this in my life. I've never seen this shit. I've never felt heat like this. I've never understood. I've never, I, I, I've never seen, I've never seen nothing like this out here in my fucking entire life. Vegas, dude, is, listen, if you're on the strip, guys, look, I mean, look, Vegas, look, Vegas is an illusion in itself. If you guys go here on vacation and you guys are on the fucking strip, nine times out of 10, 99.9% .9 of you guys aren't from Vegas anyway. So you guys are just seeing a bunch of fucking people from all over America out here on vacation. Yeah. So you're not really getting the full fucking understanding of what the fuck Vegas is. But once you guys are not on the fucking strip and you guys fucking live here, you'll get a fucking reality that this shit is fucking it's it's fucking weird because every section has the exact same fucking thing as the other section has. So no matter where you live at, we all have Ross, Targets, Home Depots, Walmarts. And then you go to another section that has a Ross, Home, Home Depot, Target, Walmart. It's like, it's all the fucking same thing. No, so no matter where you live out here, it's like the fucking Twilight Zone. But where's the fucking, where's the fucking beach at? Where's the boardwalks? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm fucking, I'm fucking in the middle of fucking nowhere, bro. Like, and, and, and then nah, it's a like hundred degrees and then there's fucking snow. I can see fucking snow. Like, where the fuck does this come from? How is it a hundred degrees and there's fucking snow? Like, <laughs> where, where is this? <laughs> It's how like here too, bro. How is there fucking how is how how is there mountains up here with fucking snow on there? And it's a fucking hundred degrees down here. Like this is is this a mirage also? Am I is it so hot down here that I'm hallucinating? You know what I'm saying? Am I really fucking seeing snow? You know what I mean? It's fucking it's, it's ridiculous, dude. I, I don't I don't get it. It's it's the weirdest fucking I feel like I'm on the moon. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the moon. <laughs> I feel like I'm on the moon compared to being on the fucking east coast and down south. I feel like I'm on the fucking moon out here, bro. Like, that's why I like going, when I go to Texas, I'm like, man, whew, I feel like I'm fucking like, I, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like I'm, man, I feel like I'm back, like in reality. Like, I feel like I'm back around reality, realistic fucking people out here. I feel like, I feel like motherfuckers out here got like batteries in their back, dude. It's feel like they're fucking robots. It's fucking, it's like, well, you know, mouse, you know, to get, to be real with you, I have to fucking get to know you to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I'm like, 
Like, what the fuck? You trying to be my boyfriend, motherfucker? <laughs> what you mean? You got right. to need to hang out with me. <laughs> like, I got to know you before we go committing crime. Yeah, well, we can chill at the mall. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck. Yeah, we got to be, you know what I'm saying? I really got to I really gotta see you, like, you know, five, six, seven, eight times before we can hit the bar, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just, you know, what, what I'm told or some shit. I, I don't, I don't hey. care. They're fucking, they're, they're just, I'm not saying that's like, like I said, that, that's just like what I see out here. You know, I, you know, I'm going to try to trail around Cali and I got plenty of love down there and I'm, and I only go to LA. So I get plenty of love down in LA and shit, Ontario, you know, Victorville, you know what I'm saying? So I'm all out in LA. I'm down in Southern Cali all the time, you know, Orange County and shit. I got plenty of love out there, but like Vegas is the, a lot of the motherfuckers out here just to me, they're just fucking, they're just fucking weird. I don't know. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the native Vegas guys. And I don't mean to be like mean to any of you Vegas dudes that are from here because I do got friends in here that are from Vegas that live here. But the thing about it is a lot of the motherfuckers that live out here, they, they say they're still from Cali. <laughs> so <laughs> the ones that I fuck with coach trail and all them, they all say that they're from Cali. So I can't, I can't give them credit as being fucking Vegas fucking uh, uh, locals, you know what I'm saying? My other homeboy, KG, and they from Harlem. So I can't give nobody that I fuck with around here, Cat Eyes and the dudes that I fuck with, they're from Cali or they're from the East Coast anyway. So I can't say that you're from Vegas anyway. So I really don't know anybody from Vegas that lives in Vegas that's from Vegas that I fuck with. Yeah, no, I feel you, man, because like... I say it how it is. I'm from Cali, and y'all people around here are weird. <laughs> you say it too, and you're trying. You're, that's, bro. Like, I, like I, I thought it was just me. Like, I thought like I was just like being biased, like mm -hmm. going to Texas and shit. The friendliness of being down south and being around just I don't want to say real people, man, because there's, there's real motherfuckers everywhere. But just going down south and being around motherfucking just dudes that's just friendly as fuck, cool ass people. You know what I mean? Like. I'm not saying like I'm not saying like you don't need no new friends type shit. You know what I'm saying as the song goes, but at the same time, bro, like the hospitality and the down south culture. You know what I'm saying? The the way that they carry shit to me is a lot more appealing than the standoffishness, the snootiness, the fucking robotness of these motherfuckers that live out here. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I just don't I don't dig it. You know what I mean? I don't get it. You know what I'm saying? So it's weird. Even the Mexicans out here, they're different than the Mexicans on the West Coast. You know, what I'm I mean, the East Coast, they're different. You know what I'm saying? It's like the Mexicans on out in D.C. and Maryland, Virginia, bro, they cool as fuck. The Mexicans in Cali, they cool as fuck. You know what I'm saying? They just they 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 cool as a bitch, bro. Like I deliver shit out. I deliver. I do. I live. I deliver in the hood. So where I'm at, I'm out in Compton, Watts, South Central. Like I'm out there, Hollywood. Like I'm I'm out in, like like some hood. You know what I'm saying? And, and, but, you know, everybody knows L.A. is predominantly Mexicans, bro. But I ain't never had no, like, like, everybody out there is, like, super cool. No matter where the fuck I'm at. Like, they're super cool. I could be on Watts and shit. I could be on Compton. Like, the Mexicans out there are super cool. Like, 100% cool. No issues, period. You know what I mean? Cool as fuck. The Mexicans out here, they walking around like fucking, like, they Donald Trump's and shit. I'm like, 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 where the fuck you from? <laughs> like, where in Mexico you from, motherfucker? <laughs> the rich part. Come on now. I'm like, man, hey, look, what part of Mexico is that? You know what I'm saying? Like, what part of Mexico you from, dog? You walking around with your nose in the motherfucking ass. Bitch, I'll kick you in your ass. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm like, get the fuck, bitch, you get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? You speaking proper, proper ass English and shit, bitch. You see me, I'm tatted the fuck up. You ain't got to talk to me like that. Man, re re respect, respect me. <laughs> no, I feel you. I'm I'm half sleeve. I got a full chest piece, right? And like, just the weird stuff, like walking down the street. You know, I'll have my shirt on or whatever. Nobody even pays attention to me. I take my shirt off. Everybody wants to stare at me. I'm like, what? You've never seen that fucking tattoo before? Oh, I shouldn't have cussed. My bad. Yeah, no, you good. No, I'm cussing all the time on here. You good? But yeah, they'll, 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 right. they'll, they'll do what they want with this shit. I just did news channel ten, Wavy TV ten. I just did the news channel. Um, what was that? Three or four days ago, right, Lisa? I just did the news channel a couple days ago, bro. I was cussing all over there, my brother. They'll use what they want. <laughs> <laughs> look, hey, look, man. Like, like two minutes into the show, bro. She didn't know me, so she, she. That, look, my my homeboy had set me up. He he's from, he's from he's he's from this shit called uh, Heavily Motivated. My boy TL. So he's really the one that got me like in this whole movement on a positivity type thing, bro, with the return of citizens and going back into 
the, to the reentry programs, going back into the prisons, going back into the, the schools and all that type of like he was like the main dude. Like he's the one that really like pushed all this shit. So he's got his own channel too. Shout out TL, Hover Heavily Motivated. Y'all go check his channel out. Yes, but, sir, uh, he, was, he was like the uh he was the one that really got me rolling in this stuff, bro. So he hit me up the other day. He's like, yo, Wavy TV 10 from our city is trying to hit you up. Like I told them about you. They want to talk to you about gangs and prison and all this other shit. I was like, cool. So they gave me the Zoom. I get on there. This fucking chick is on there. So I'm like, damn, I like shit. Huh? She is so. So fucking so I get on the zone and she look, I like, damn, I say like, that said shit. I said, man, she's a good looking little good looking little news lady, right? So I'm thinking like right outside. I was like, this is good looking little dog. She look, she literally like, like about three, hey, about three minutes into the Joe Modesto. She had her hair all pulled back, dog. Three minutes into the Joe, she hit the dunk like this. <laughs> she pulled it. <laughs> she let her hair down and all sorts of shit. Once she got loose on the video. She like, she goes, she like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. I was like, yeah, that's the shit. I'm like, all right, let's, let's talk, man. <laughs> like, you cute yeah. and all, but last I checked, I'm married. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, shit. Bro, look, I'm going to tell you, man. Bro, these, these motherfuckers ain't got no cut cards, bro. I'll be laughing at these motherfuckers, bro. Even in the gyms and shit, I'll be laughing at these motherfuckers, man. I'll be like, these bitches crazy, bro. Girls ain't got, listen, for all y'all dudes out there, that motherfucker got goddamn, uh, um, you know what I'm saying, wives and all that shit, bro. These girls out here don't give a fuck. These girls out here will say and do anything. They don't give a fuck, bro. If you fit that part, they don't give a fuck. So you ain't lying. You all gotta stand on y'all motherfucking toes and be like, hey, look, you know, I'm married, and you know, what I mean, I'm, you know, that's what it is, dog. You know how many times in Texas I've had to say that shit. You know how many times I had to use that shit. I've used that shit a thousand times, even if it was just to get the bitch away from me. Because I'm like, bitch, you was fucking busted. I'm married. Get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you look like Shrek. I'm married. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, look, I'm going to introduce you to my boy Donkey over here. My, I'm going to introduce you to I'm going to introduce you to Donkey, but I'm married. <laughs> Oh, Dude, I'm allowed to look. I just ain't allowed to touch. You know what I mean, if they get a little too touchy, yeah, I'm married. You know, leave me alone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Look, I be in the shirt clubs. I be in that joint, drunk, fucked up. Got the homies in there from the fights and shit like that, bro. I literally watched Lisa teleport across the club like goddamn Doctor Spock. You ever watch Star Wars? Uh, Star Trek. I, I was I was so fucked up, dog. My homeboys, uh, we was in we in there with, with some like rich ass Mexicans. You know what I'm saying I'm gonna say who they are or what they are, but I'm in the, I'm in the clubs with some rich ass Mexicans, like real rich. So they on we got whole sections like that are ours, like whole strip clubs that are ours. Like we got our own security. At least I'll tell you, we got our own security. We got our own everything that's ours. You can't even come into this section if you're just like anybody else in the club. You can't even come over here. You know what I'm saying? So like we got our own fucking shit. So I step out of where the fuck we at. I go to the bathroom. And the dude's like, yo, you do mighty mouse that be doing the fighting shit on YouTube. And so I'm like, yeah, that's what's up. He's like, bro, can I buy you a, a, a lap dance and shit? Whatever. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, man. I'm like, I'm a, whatever, man. It's a fucking lap dance. What the fuck is that? This is nothing. So uh, look, I look over there. Lisa's like literally like 30 yards away. If you if you imagine on a football field 30 yards, that's that, you know, that's 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 an all right little distance. <laughs> all right, little distance, right? She so, said they ain't having them, bro. I'm watching her, and I'm just like, man, I already know she's gonna be mad as shit. She goddamn sees this shit, right? So, like, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to like hurry up with this live dance so I can fucking go on back over the fuck where we're at. So, but I'm watching her, bro. Look, literally, bro. I literally took my eyes off her for like two seconds, two seconds, bro. It was like some beat me up, Scotty, bro. She literally <laughs> teleported. She teleported from one side of the club to the other. Like she was literally over there, like within like like a split second. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, damn. I'm like, where the where the fuck you come from? Like you were like come out the roof. Like where the fuck did you come from? <laughs> she's like, beat me up, Scotty. <laughs> bro, beat me up, Scotty. But she's like grabbing the bitch, like bitch, get off my fucking husband. And I'm like, I'm like, still, babe, she's just doing her job. <laughs> oh. Man. I'm like, she's at work, man. She's just doing her job. I'm like, chill. You know what I'm saying? 
But like, I knew like, I was like, she gonna be mad as a bitch, bro. Even though I didn't do anything, I was like, what, what happened? I was not rubbing on her ass, man. All right, so, so don't be beating me up. Don't be beating me up in the messages and stuff, all right? But I've never, ever, ever been to a strip club, no lie. <laughs> <laughs> bro, listen, I'm gonna tell you, homie. You know, me personally, like, on, on some real shit, if it wasn't for, like, seeing the people that I'm around, like, I probably wouldn't go either. I like the strip club because I like the fucking scene because some of, most of the strip clubs, like, down south, like, is where, like, a lot of the hip-hop shit, they, they turn it into a real club. So a lot of the strip clubs is, like, real clubs down there. So they just got okay. it as a strip club. So it's not specifically you going to a strip club. It's just like, this club is lit because, but they also have strip club there. So it's a little different than just going to a regular club. The strip clubs are, are the real clubs down south. You know what I'm saying? Like the strip clubs are, are yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? The strip clubs are, are where it's at. So you can't just be like, well, I'm going to go to such and such club. Such and such club is lame as fuck. If it ain't a strip club, it's lame. You know what I mean? So strip clubs down south are a little bit fucking different, man. You know what I'm saying? Like Vegas, they got every fucking club you want to go to. You know what I'm saying? Any club you want, they got it out here. You know what I'm saying? Down south, it ain't like that. The strip clubs are the fucking spot. Yeah. No matter what. See, I want to go. I want to go just so I can say I've been to one, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't need to stay long. <laughs> you ain't got to do shit, bro. They get naked out there. They, they, they do a little. But like down south, bro, they get butt-ass naked. But they do not. Virginia, they don't get naked. I said, I didn't say down south. I didn't say, but I didn't say Virginia and shit like that. I don't get Where fucking. DC gets naked, but like Virginia, and Maryland, and shit, they don't get naked like that. Yeah, Dallas, down south, they get naked, bro. Atlanta, Atlanta's like got the best strip. Of Atlanta and Miami got the best strip clubs, period. But fucking like Dallas got some like ecstasy and shit. If you go down to, if you ever go down to Dallas, bro, if you ever hit Dallas, go down to fucking a club called Ecstasy, bro. It's like three floors high. It's jumping. The strip, the strip club is crazy, bro. They got they that they got so much money in there. They sweep they sweeping that shit off the floor. You know what I'm saying? Like girls out there are making fucking two and three thousand dollars a night. The girls out there are making bread. They don't even hire a girl that works in there unless they like fucking super like top notch ass chicks, bro. You you ain't gonna be no just regular stripper working in fucking ecstasy. They got a million other strip clubs out there, but unless you top flight, you're not working in ecstasy, bro. You're not gonna just be a regular stripper. Like we go to what's the other one we went to? Tigers, right? Tigers and shit. They got good looking girls in there too. But Tigers is also got like regular, smaller spot, you know, regular type strip club. But ecstasy, bro, motherfuckers snoring coke off the fucking table, smoking blunts in the club, fucking doing whatever, they're, doing anything they want to do in there, bro. They they probably fucking up in there. I don't know, but they probably doing that. And yeah, that's the type of club. They, they should be. Nah, um, man, bro, I, like, I'm gonna try to keep it kosher on here. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I see it all. I see it all. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just keeping kosher on video. But as far as like what I've seen out there, bro, they, yeah, they, it's, it's, it's legit. <laughs> Down south is legit, dog. They legit out there, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. They're legit down south, man. It's, it's, it's the home of the strip clubs, bro. Atlanta, cheetahs, strokers. Like I've been there. Uh, no matter what you like, whether you like black chicks or white chicks, like, like cheetahs and shit, you just got. Like some of the, the baddest fucking white chicks you've ever fucked, baddest fucking Spanish chicks you've ever seen in your life, bro. Like I'm talking about like any fetish you got, bro, they got them. They're there. You know what I'm saying? They got them. You know what I'm saying? Like I've been to some fucking shits out in like my city. It's like, bitch, you got a fucking, you ain't got no ass and you got a goddamn tampon hanging out. You know what I'm saying? Bitch, get your ass off the stage before I throw a shoe at you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like get the fuck off the stage, bitch. You know what I'm saying? You had no business up here, man. I'm gonna throw a boot at your ass, yeah. a banana peel at you or something, man. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> get bro, yeah, I live like, no, in the hood, bro. Them motherfuckers in the hood, bro. They get up there, they dance for, they dance for motherfucking diaper money. You know what I'm saying? They dance for fucking formula. They up there, fucking. They get up that bitch on that. They get up that bitch having a fucking goddamn tampon string hanging out their panties. <laughs> <laughs> I seen a bitch. Look, I seen a bitch in Virginia Beach up there dancing with a cast on. I was like, "Damn, bitch!" I was like, "You fucking!" <laughs> I was like, "Man, you can't even walk." I said, "How the fuck are you gonna get up here and dance?" That bitch up there. That bitch up in that bitch pop locking and dropping it like she's fucking on her last 
her last motherfucking goddamn uh, uh, diaper. <laughs> Man, that's messed up. <laughs> I mean, I had to give her twenty dollars because I felt sorry for her. <laughs> Oh, I mean, man. It's, it's $20. Get the fuck off the stage. Man, I don't know where you're going, but you need to get out of here. Here's 20 Get the fuck out of here, man. I don't know where I look. Listen, go, go dance in the parking lot, bitch, because you fucking the goddamn game. But those other bitches trying to get up here. You know what I'm saying? You fucking the whole shit up for 15 minutes. You got to roll out. It's $20, bro. You know what I'm saying? Man. That's but look, man. I'm going to tell you, bro, you got anything else you want to say, man? We've been on here for over an hour. We've been on, I told you it was going to be easy, man. We're going to chop it up. See, I'm just not I'm, not. I'm not good with this electronic stuff, okay? They don't have none of this shit in prison, so uh, I have a hard time with it. So somebody's like, hey, uh, let's, uh, what? Nah. <laughs> hey, you did good, bro. You did good, homie. Like I said, man, you, you kept a, you, you know, you gave your situation up. You gave it to where you're at and what you're doing now, bro. You know what I'm saying? And that's really all that matters. We took it an extra mile. And, and, you know, went off in the left field and had fun with it. You know what I mean? So that's all that matters, dog. You know what I mean? Wow. You did your thing. And but you know, um, I appreciate, I appreciate you, you come out here. We're going to do a real live thing when you come out of this motherfucker, man. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get a motherfucking pound of mollies and some cocaine. And no, I'm just <laughs> I don't even drink, bro. So I don't know who's doing all that. <laughs> no, man. All right. Not me, but look. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to bring me back to that lifestyle. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm, saying? I'm an ex drug addict. I don't need. Hey, I'll be, I'll be around. Hey, I'll be around here crawling. I'll be. You be like, damn man, why is Mouse crawling on the floor naked? <laughs> hey, I just want to know, bro. Why is Mouse in the living room doing the worm naked? <laughs> I just want to know. <laughs> be like, hey, look, baby. I told you we shouldn't have went to Vegas. <laughs> man. Look at Mouse! Look at Mouse break dancing. That motherfucker got a speed on one break dancing in the living room to a YouTube video. <laughs> man, yeah, I can't oh, wait. Man, man, man. We'll some liquor, man. Have some fun, man. Do it up and hit yes, some, of these, some of these clubs up. I got VIP at, at, at several spots. I don't want to say their names on here, but I do got VIP at some nice spots. Uh, I get a babysitter for the night, man. We'll go out there and chill. We can do the family thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? You got kids, yeah. I got kids. We can just chill here at the crib, man. Get fucked I'll up. I'll have my baby with me regardless. Man, bring him. Bring your baby. We'll I ain't got a choice. Make yeah. some live fees. I'll hit the motherfucker. I'll hit the liquor store. And we'll sit back here and get fucked up just with us. It ain't yeah, I literally to- don't leave my kid with nobody. Nah. So my kid's it's coming. Me. And you know, actually, bro, neither do I. My fucking son, look, I'm going to tell you, bro. Frank Mir from the UFC. Literally just found me a babysitter that I can trust, which is I'm not gonna say who it is, but uh, Frank Mir. I tr- if I trust his babysitter, you know I, I gotta trust him. You know what I'm saying? That's Frank Mir. You know what I'm saying? That's a Hall of Famer from the UFC, like, uh, and it's his people. So of course I trust his people. You know, and but, but plus my son, my, my youngest son is eight years old too, so it's yeah. a little different. You and your son, little, your son yeah. could tell you if something happens. Yeah. He might don't talk. Little, it's, it's ain't nobody different. watching her. But, bro, I went years and years and years without even going out. You know what I'm saying? Except for when I had fights. I went years and years and years without even going out, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's literally gotten to the point now where, like, Cash can literally go over to a friend's house and stay the night. He's got friends out here that he stays the night out at their yeah. house and stuff. So, bro, I, I literally, for the first time since I've been out of prison, I've been out of prison since 2015, I have literally got to the point where I've actually kind of feel free and I still feel free with my wife. It's not feeling free just by myself. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's fucking, man, I'm telling you, bro, it's a weight off my shoulders. It feels fucking great because I came straight out of prison to a kid. You know what I'm saying? And we're not going to talk about that. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it is what it is. Certain prisons are certain ways. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So certain things happen. But we're not going to get into that. But, you know, it is what it is. If your system is like that, then that's what it be. You know what I'm saying? My system was like that. You know, in certain spots where you were at was like that. You know what I mean? But I'm going to get up off here, man. Hey, look, peace to my man Modesto. I appreciate you coming out, G. This was a good-ass live feed. No bullshit. We did it up. And uh, whenever you come out to Vegas, it's going down, bro. You already know what it is. Might be there a lot sooner than you think. Mm-hmm. Anytime. Any weekend, bro. The 19th, I got to go to uh, uh, Pittsburgh after that, bro. I'm free for a minute. So holler at me. I might yeah. hear some cash flow around the tent, so. Hey, whatever. You can come out here this week. Mike. I'm here. Mike. <laughs> All right, G. Love you, homie, man. I appreciate you, both. No, nah, I love you too, man. All right.